So welcome everyone to the RDAP business meeting. My name is Amy Koshoffer and I'm at the University of Cincinnati and I'm the current RDAP president. Um, I will be transitioning off um, July 1st and Rachel Woodbrook will become our new president. Um, we are joined uh, by the executive board who I'll introduce in a moment and then many of the um, action committee leadership are also here. And uh, this is a, um, a webinar where um, you have been muted. Um, some of your cameras are turned off unless you are on the leadership or exec board. Um, but I think we're gonna do it a little bit differently that um, you will be unmuted at the end if you need to ask questions or something like that. So it can be a little bit more dis of a discussion at the end. Um, if you wanna put some uh, questions in the Q&A and we can respond to those that way. Of course, it's at the bottom of the screen and you can answer it there. Um, we do have a code of conduct helper for this session, Emily Kilser, um, who was the uh, very good moderator for our keynote, our wonderful keynote that just happened. So um, if there is a, a code of conduct violation or you need some help, something to address, um, you can contact Emily and then um, she'll give you an email to be able to um, fill out a form about the situation. And of course, there are also the community notes, which you can respond to. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully this works. Um, if I can just get a confirmation that somebody can see my slides. Yep, can see them. Yes. OK, so here we go, the business meeting. OK, so um, like I said, I'm Amy, president. Rachel is our president-elect, soon to be um, incoming president. Lindsay um, Gippen is the secretary. Unfortunately, Lindsay had an issue today and is not joining us, um, but uh, she's our secretary. Um, Patty Condon is our treasurer. Um, we'll also be rolling off um, at the end of June. Um, and that position is um, one of the ones that you can run for. And John Petters is our past president. So here is our lovely faces. Oh, okay. Um, so for today, we're going to talk about some of the executive board updates, action committee updates, some announcements, and then a Q&A. Like I said, here are the faces of the executive committee. Um, I really want to encourage everyone to consider running for the board. Um, this is going to be a theme throughout the meeting because um, your voices are very important. It's a wonderful opportunity to be on the board. You learn a lot. You make a lot of connections. Please, please. Um, put your name in the hat. Let's make it a competitive um, election. And uh, please, everyone, you know, voices. We need lots of representation. Um, we need voices. So please consider running. And there are lots of opportunities to get involved in RDAP. And you'll hear about some of those wonderful opportunities in a moment. So the state of RDAP, I feel like I have to follow the traditions and say the state is good. Um, we've had a pretty strong year. Um, we have managed to accomplish a lot of what was set in our original strategic plan. So this is a, a really great um, announcement to make, and I'll kind of go through what it is. But it also means that we now have some work to do um, to think about the next direction for RDEM. Uh, so one of our main goals was our business operations. We've really matured our, our budgetary process. Um, you can submit a proposal and the board will review it, and then we can dedicate funds to it. Um, we are in the process of moving to an RDAP shared Google Drive. Um, that takes a bit of time. We have a lot of content to migrate, so we're gonna take some time and do that. We've developed a retention policy. Um, this is very much a thank you to Patty, who's been working on this. We also have now a place for um, a policy in place for honorariums so that we can pay the people who do the work in our um, webinars and um, uh, our educational opportunities. So this is something that we've really been striving for. And um, so it's in place now. And then we have been a good community partner in that we've been supporting other organizations who may need assistance because they don't have any kind of um, financial infrastructure to put on events. So in particular, two conferences that we've helped with their registration and payment is CEDLS, the Southeast Data Librarian Symposium, and then the Empirical um, Librarians Research Conference. Um, we've also helped facilitate that. We are working on adding value 
um, to RDAP members? I mean, what does it mean to be a member? What do you get for the membership fee that you pay? Obviously, coming to something like this and getting reduced registration for the summit is a, um, a benefit, but we are also giving out prizes. Um, so if you attended one of the, the kickoff events, there was wonderful games, and then people won prizes for attending and, and for winning the, the trivia, which was a lot of fun. I was so honored to be a trivia question, and if you run for the board, you can be a trivia question too. So um, I encourage that. Um, and then we have... Um, awards that are going to be launched. So I believe there's like a, a award for best work um, and things like this. So we are working on developing this value. We're also building a webinar archive um, so that that will be available to members. Um, one of the things that I've been really excited about to work on this year is um, promoting um, our diversity, inclusion, equity, and accessibility climate. Um, one of the things that we have done is we have engaged the Unite Lab from the University of Southern Florida to work with us um, in kind of a consultant capacity to look at how accessibility is our conference and the materials from our conference. Um, they were actually here at the conference. Um, I don't know if they're in the business meeting or not, but they are. They were around in some of the sessions and kind of looking at the way we present things. And they are also evaluating our documentation around the conference. So um, we will have a report that comes out um, to the board in May about um, their findings. And they also offered two pre-conference workshops on universal design, which everyone was encouraged to attend. And I hope that you were able to. Okay. And then our last goal of advocacy, as I mentioned, we wanna be a good community partner and you know, um, part of our budgetary maturity process included the support for other organizations. But then we're also um, engaging with the communities that focus on data. So we've had discussions with FASAB. Um, and another one, um, you heard a lot about CARC today and I'm also involved in CARC, but another um, connection that we've been making is from a group that's kind of inspired by CARC is this research computing and data community builders which has membership from EDUCAUSE, um, the Academic Data Science Alliance, um, Women in High Performance Computing, the US Research Software Engineers Group. And so um, there are a few others, I'm not remembering them all at the moment, but RDAP is represented there. And actually Amy Neeser is going to be our new um, uh, liaison to that group. And so um, we are working on building the relationship with these other groups that are in the data research data space. Um, if you have suggestions, we're open to looking into other ways to do this. Um, but again, we would need volunteers. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stress that throughout this entire talk that um, getting involved in volunteering, we're trying to look for those different opportunities to be able to engage these. And so if you have suggestions, you can send them to the board. Another thing that we did, again, as that part of that, um, you know, that financial maturity process, we have that proposal and a ad hoc group of librarians and information professionals who wanted to come together and work on developing resources around the new um, NIH policy, formed a group. Um, it was led by Hao Yi from also University of Florida. And he you know, gathered people together and then put in a proposal to request honorariums for people doing that work. Not everybody could receive an honorarium, um, but some could. And so we paid honorariums to people to reward them for that time that they put into this project. That project generated a lot of output. Um, there's an OSF project um, related to it. So if you get the slides, you can click on the link, but I'm sure you've seen some of the presentations that have been given about it. And I have to admit, I use those checklists almost daily in the work that I was doing to advise people. So it's been a really great resource. And there's one more resource coming out of it. So the work is still ongoing. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to John to talk about where we're going next. All right, yes, thanks, Amy. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, strategic plan high-level goals that are we're currently working under. And it was meant to be a five-year uh, strategic plan, uh, but as we've gone on, and as Amy has just demonstrated, we have accomplished a whole bunch towards these goals. And actually the strategic plan from where we started in 2020 as a very new organization is getting stale, uh, not, as, not as useful in, in directing us. So we are currently working on a new strategic plan Next slide there, please. 
So this is in the works and we're kind of thinking about more of like a, a shorter term horizon, maybe doing a revisiting of the strategic planning process for the organization maybe every three years. We'll see how this goes. But these are the high level goals currently draft. I want to be very, very clear. It's draft uh, goals, high level goals we have. And you'll know that some of these, if you read them, some of them are quite similar to what we already had. I mean, it's not like the word we're done dealing with diversity and inclusion issues within our adopt community. There's still a lot of work to do. We still have more to do under business practices and policies, even though things have gotten uh, gotten way better, way way improved compared to where we started. Um, and and uh, the main the new the new entrant really here is about where does RDAP fit in the research data management landscape. There's been a lot of discussions we've been having about that. So uh, currently we are, we're, we're working on these within the executive board. We will pass them to leadership for review and improvement. And whenever we perceive, uh, achieve some, some level of consensus, we'll put it out to membership vote, membership for a vote for approval or, or not approval uh, going forward. So have, give, us, give us a new, not a new direction, but a new, new steering in our, in our move as we continue to, to be a good organization for, for all our DAP members. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Now if I can invite Patty to give an update on the financial situation. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so this shows the current revenue and expenditures um, um, and our operating um, net operating revenue for uh, FY23 so far as of February 27th. Um, our current bank balance is um, just under 49,000. Um, this year, as of February 27th, we were um, uh, almost $2,000. We, we didn't make any money. We, we, we spent more than we, we brought in. Um, I anticipate that this year, um, this might be, this might, the, the final figure might be around this. I'm not worried about it. Um, we're still getting, uh, trying to understand the flow of income around membership. We're also trying to spend more money. We're trying to spend more money to um, to work with action committee, committee initiatives and um, executive board initiatives so that we can um, benefit the RDAP community. And also understanding what that, what our, um, the, what the bank balance needs to look like because you know about fifty thousand dollars that's that's high so we want to you know know we want to understand like how many years of operating expenses do we need um if we didn't sort of make any money uh during a year so I'm not worried if we are sort of in in the the, the red this year it's nothing that anyone should worry about we still have three more months um but I do anticipate based on sort of what I'm seeing that this this might be what it looks like um Yep, and it is a lean operating budget. I mean, we we're I, anywhere between around seven to ten is sort of what it what it takes to sort of to as to to keep the lights on. Um, the the final numbers will come out sort of at the end of the fiscal year, um, and I I think that those that final budget that might go that final report might go into the um, uh, OSF. I'm not sure, uh, but also uh, yeah. So that is the picture. Please reach out to me if you have any questions um, about the details um, of this. And also um, this year, the treasurer position is up for voting. Also, please reach out to me if you have any questions about what it's like to be the esteemed RDAP treasurer. Um, and uh, know that you won't be alone for the first year because I, I stick around and bother you for a, for a year. Uh, and that's all. Thank you very much. I think, um, so as I mentioned, Lindsay can't join us today, um, but um, there's a, pretty much all of our documentation is available through the Open Science Framework. You can see um, descriptions of the committees and the board duties. Um, the summit materials are there. Um, our uh, newsletter um, put together by our publishing committee, which always needs volunteers. I'm gonna give them a shout out. So please consider being on that action committee. Um, those newsletters are there. And the minutes from the executive board and the leadership team are available. So you can read them and get a sense of what's going on. Um, if, you, if you're not involved in these meetings, you, you can um, catch up with us. And then the bylaws are also there. Okay. okay now I'm going to turn it over to Rachel to um, talk about a couple of the other things, the election. 
Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Um, so along with what I think Amy and John and Patty have all been talking about, we're at sort of an inflection point as an organization. We've had a few um, iterations of the board and we have a lot of, we have at least the beginning and in some cases pretty mature processes around a lot of things. And so we're taking this moment to pause and rethink our strategic plan and how we want to move forward. Um, but we do also have some things that happen every year. So election, elections and action committee recruitment are coming up. I'll be running those as the um, president elect and I'll have a slide for each of those in a minute. Um, we'll be continuing to work on the strategic planning. Um, and there's a lot of things sort of coinciding toward the end of this fiscal year, beginning of next year with the new board. So the timing for things might shift a little. We're also working on developing a plan for how we want to approach next year's summit, which um, the board did end up deciding is going to be virtual once more for 2024, but also thinking about being more systematic moving forward with um, how we think about this and make decisions and what it will look like, not just for next year, but moving forward, what the future looks like. And I did want to say just a couple points here. Um, I know we might have some discussion or questions about this, but also um, we're planning to have a town hall in the spring or summer in which to which all membership is invited. We really encourage people who feel strongly um, to, to, to share your, um, to, to attend that and to share your points of view with us. We're really um, hoping to engage much more of the membership in making um, in sort of drawing together information to make that decision. And I also wanted to share that this decision was made after extensive conversation with both the board and leadership, um, including thinking about costs, both for us as an organization, also for attendees and potentially their organizations and what budgets they might have, um, the timeline that it requires to do sort of an in-person component um, the labor required, especially for the summit planning committee, the members of which currently have only done virtual conferences. And this would not only be a shift back to in-person, but also hybridizing because we don't want to lose the accessibility gains that um, going virtual has given us. Although we recognize that virtual is a different experience than in-person and there are some things that we um, haven't been able to do that we enjoy doing in terms of interacting. And so we're gonna be trying to think about Basically, what will hybrid mean for us moving forward? How can we um, address the things that we haven't been able to do in the last few years by being fully virtual while also thinking about what does accessibility mean for us and for the summit moving forward? Oh, next slide. So in terms of the elections, um, we've had a few call outs already, but the open call for nominations is running for about the next two weeks to April 14th. And we're accepting nominations for both treasurer and president-elect, um, which is the role I'm currently in. And that is a role that is president-elect for one year and then president for one year and then past president for one year. Um, and so I think that the, um, let's see, oh, sorry. Yeah, so if you um, are considering running for one of those positions but have any questions, please feel free. We have a, a summary of responsibilities linked here. There's also a little bit more fleshed out um, duties and responsibilities linked from the summary. And then you can also, as Patty mentioned, reach out to the people in those positions to see how much work it entails, what sort of um, support and um, skills you, well, what sort of support you will have and what sort of uh, background might be helpful coming into the role. Um, you do have to be a current member to run or vote or serve on the committees. That's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, you can check your membership status on the website. Um, and we, yeah, encourage you to think about um, nominating either yourself or someone else um, to come and help us run the organization, because really the capacity that we have and what we're able to do depends on all of us and the time and expertise that we decide to volunteer. Um, next slide. And then similarly for the action committee recruitment, that will be on a similar timeline. Those opportunities are open from now until the 14th. And we let you, um, we ask for sort of your first three preferences. So there will be a little bit of um, Tetrising on the back end on my part to figure out how to get distribution across the committees um, to sponsorship, membership, and conference planning committees this year begin May 1st. Um, so um, pretty soon after the, the volunteering um, opening closes. Uh, all other committees will begin on July 1st. And I especially want to put out a plug for sponsorship. Um, 
that's generally something that I think people coming from a library's background often don't, um, they might feel intimidated by, but they make so much of what we do possible. It's a really good group and uh, they're always in need of more volunteers. So please um, consider, even if you're not sure about it, um, consider reaching out to potentially the committee. They'll be speaking in a moment here too about what they've been doing. Um, and they, I'm sure be happy to talk with you about what it might entail to join. Yeah, I think that's it for me. Uh, next slide. Oh, and yeah, so I'm going to uh, finish this one off. I just want to take an extra time. I mean, the board works very hard for all of RDAP and, you know, Patty and Rachel, John and I work really hard, but it is really Lindsay that makes a lot of things happen because she's the person scheduling all our meetings. She is the person putting the notes documents together. And she's also the person who um, gets the documentation into OSF and gives all the right permissions. And so I just want to give her a special shout out um, because she did have an interesting transition into her position this year. And we would have been lost without her really having the, um, you know, the, the, the grit <laughs> to, to get the work done. So thank you to Lindsay, although she's not able to be here with us. Okay. Um, so now I think I'm going to go we're going to go to the action committees i'm just going to pull the chat down for a second so um, i can respond to some of the things going in and the questions going in and then um if we can have the action committees um i believe the first one is the conference committee so let's see yes it is us there you go well Thank you so much. Yes, we are the conference planning committee. My name is Seth Garnack and my co-chair is Amy Yarnell. Uh, if you were able to join us this year, this is our third virtual RDAP summit. Uh, I'm a little biased. I think it went pretty well. Um, but some changes that we made this year uh, that you might be interested to know is that uh, we did mostly concurrent sessions this year for the first time and had two panels. Uh, we also had a partnership with the NCDS or the National Center for Data Services from the NLM, NNLM uh, for intern presentations. We also interspersed lightning talks and presentations. We also enabled complimentary registration for uh, speakers, scholarship winners, and sponsors directly through Wild Apricot so that we can make sure that they can all have an equal, everybody can have an equal chance of getting access to our awesome workshops. Uh, we also enabled uh, Zoom reactions, which I'm glad to see people are taking advantage of, and we love to see that throughout the conference. Um, and we also pre-populated the community note document with more information, as well as uh, added optional recordings for posters and fewer posters per session. And these, all of these changes and suggestions that we made all came from you. They're all from your feedback that you gave us during last year. Uh, and so if there, if you like really like this, or if there's other changes that you think we should make uh, for our virtual summit that's going to be next year, please let us know. Uh, there's going to be a feedback survey coming out uh, shortly after the summit. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and we hope to see uh, the number of proposals grow year on year. This year we had 58 and we look more to more next year. I know that I've spoken to some attendees that have been inspired by talks as well as some ongoing projects that I can't wait to hear what they're going to say next year. And so uh, really looking forward to that. I'm going to pass it off to my co-chair, Amy. Next slide. Thanks, Tess. And uh, now I just want to thank all of our volunteers, both everyone on the action committees. Again, every action committee has a role to play and the executive board. Um, and also so many people, uh, when they registered, um, volunteered to help out. So we had um, people helping uh, moderate sessions and our code of conduct volunteers and uh, so many people who uh, helped make this happen and it would not have been possible without you. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, extra special thank you to the rest of the conference planning committee, Hannah, Anthony, Linda, Emily, Michael, Abby, Dylan, Ashley. Um, they all work so tirelessly for months, um, just doing every, you know, all sorts of tasks involved. Um, and thank you, my co-chair Tess, um, as her second year as a co-chair, was able to help show me the ropes. And um, it's been so great working with you. And thanks. <laughs> and that's all for us. We can have a sponsorship committee. Is there someone from sponsorship? No, I'm here. Sorry, okay. technical difficulties. Please stand by. 
Uh, hi, I'm Barbara Esty, and together with Angel Tang and Laura Palumbo, we are the sponsorship committee. And this committee works to raise um, money to reduce registration costs and also create sponsorship uh, scholarship opportunities for the summit. Uh, most of our work um, with outreach happens in the fall and the earliest parts of the winter. So once the theme is set, so we get together in the summer, but really. Um, we don't really start our work until everybody else has sort of started theirs. So we were a very uh, small committee this year. So if anyone is interested, please consider joining us um, for 2024. Uh, this year, we did continue the tradition of our uh, alliteration in our tier names that are reflective of the uh, community theme for the sponsorship packages. So connector, collaborator, and cultivator. So if you join us, on the sponsorship committee, you can help um, pick the next, you know, package to your names. So to hear more about our sponsors, I'm going to hand you over to Angel. Next slide. All right. Hi, this is Angel Tong. I'd just like to recognize all of our wonderful sponsors for uh, helping make our dab uh, possible this year. If I could go to the next slide, please. So at the highest tier of sponsorship, we'd like to recognize Elsevier for being a cultivator level, level sponsor at $750. And at the collaborator level for $500, I'd like to recognize Cornell University Library, Spark, the University of Miami Libraries, the University of Arizona Libraries, and the Information School at UW-Madison. Angel, I think we're not hearing you anymore. Um, hey. Okay. Hello, hello? Oh, there you are. Okay, not sure what happened. <laughs> Apologies. Um, but yes, just to um, yeah, finish up the slide, um, I'd like to recognize Dryad for sponsoring at the connector level, which is $250. Mm -hmm. And next slide, please. Yes. And so um, thanks so much to Dryad for sponsoring our opening keynote and to Elsevier for sponsoring our closing keynote. And finally, we'd like to recognize Elsevier and the RDAP Association members for uh, supporting our scholarships. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think, yeah, that, that wraps it up. I hand it over to marketing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think you blew my mind. I didn't realize about that alliteration. So I learned something today. <laughs> So is Elena here? Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Elena. I'm one of the co-chairs of the marketing committee. Um, and marketing um, as a committee, we basically promote RDAP events and activities, especially the summit, to our members and to the wider data community. Um, so our team, you've probably gotten tons of emails from me, um, but our team reaches out to our affiliated groups and related groups and listservs. We reach out to iSchools to promote the summit scholarships. Um, and we also manage the blog or the news portion of the website um, and the RDAP storefront, which is what we, we use on Cafe Press for. You can access that through the website as well. Um, we also um, create a lot of the materials you've probably been seeing, um, like um, the, the backgrounds for our, uh, some of us have been using during the conference. Um, and we're always looking for people who have graphic design skills or an interest in outreach and promotion. Um, this year, too, um, we conducted a short online engagement survey. Many of you may have taken it. Thank you if you did. Um, and we're going to be using this to kind of think about our strategy going forward, um, thinking about where you'd like to interact with RDAP um, as a member and as a, a data community member. So um, if you're interested in participating in that conversation, we'd love to have you join the marketing committee. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities going forward for kind of thinking about our strategy in that way. Um, and I also want to just do a shout out to my co-chair and um, all of our committee members. You've been a great committee to work with this year. Um, Elena, can you mention the name of your um, co-chair since they didn't make it on the slide? Yes, it's Renee and Julian. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we can have the website. Uh, hi. Um, so let's see. Well, we've been doing a lot this year with Wild Apricot, continuing to um, edit and uh, and navigate it. And uh, we are publishing 
uh, new pages and updating um, whenever we get those. Um, we uh, well, Megan uh, was our was our um, uh, creator of a new web design and, and proposed architecture. So we're looking forward to working hard around that and and uh, getting that going forward. Um, we supported some external events. Uh, the one that uh, stands out to me is uh, Settles. Um, and we're uh, planning some new membership uh, offerings in a, a new membership space. And uh, so that will be something that's coming out in the future. Um, and um, some of the event modules, we improved um, how that works. Um, and then continued some work with the uh, widgets and CSS and other of the platform features that um, there's always stuff changing um, in Wild Apricot and always stuff to learn. Um, and I wanted to welcome Michael Moore um, as my co-chair and, and thank him. And, and uh, so he'll be coming in uh, next, next term um, and looking forward to working with him in the future, as well as uh, really thank all of my um, colleagues that um, on the on the website committee. So thank you all. And I think we have publishing. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Uh, so I'm Allie Kirsten um, on the publishing committee with my co chair, Jamaica Jones. And uh, every year, we help to put out the just Lib special issue, uh, the art app conference special issue. And so I'd like to give a special thank you to uh, Caitlin, Kat, Janine, and Paria, who all helped to put out the 2022 RDAP um, Summit special issue. And so uh, if anybody is thinking that you would like to get, um, get your presentation together into a paper and submit to this year's special issue of uh, Journal of e Science Librarianship, we encourage you to do so. And we do have some um, mentorship if you're not accustomed to putting together a manuscript for publication. So, um, and we also put the newsletters out. So if you enjoy our newsletters, that's what we do four times a year. We'd love to have more of you join us. So for our education and uh, resources committee. So that's me. So uh, um, we've had several webinars and workshops over the course of the year. We have a few more coming up. So we've had three webinars already before the summit and we'll have three more already scheduled for after the summit. So please keep your eye out on the RDAP listserv because we'll be announcing them there and sharing information on how you can join in. You might have also attended the four summit workshops and thank you all for everyone who came and enjoyed those. We have a regular journal club. Again, keep your eye out for the RDAP listserv when we keep announcing those events. And we tried out a new uh, Cafe Clash format in the fall that seemed to go over well. So we may try that again. On the back end, we've been busy this year. Um, Amy already mentioned a couple of things that we're working on. We're working on a workflow to upload webinars to YouTube. So it'll be available for watching for those of you who cannot make it. That happens, we're busy people. And uh, with uh, the executive board and particularly the treasurer, we had an honoraria last year for the first time for workshop leaders. And now we've enacted an honoraria for webinar speakers. So we're working out the kinks in that workflow, uh, but we're really happy to be able to pay the people who are giving their time and their knowledge to RDAP. And so I want to say thank you from myself and my co-chair, Chris Battiston. And I want to say thank you to uh, the members of my committee who are really leading these individual events and helping us bring this content to you. So thank you to Hallie, Helen, Mary, Shannon, Courtney, Julia, Rebecca, Kat, and Sarah. Okay, and the action committee, or sorry, membership committee, um, Sheila. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sheila Rabin. I am the chair of the RDAP membership committee. Um, many of you may recognize me if your organization is a member of ORCID through the ORCID US community. Um, I manage that program, and we also have a data site consortium for uh, US nonprofits too at Lyricis. Um, so uh, the membership committee, we um, we've had a lot going on this year. Um, like Amy mentioned earlier, we launched the RDAP Member Awards Program, um, which I linked earlier 
in the chat, but you can also look at our RDAP membership information page and there's a link to it there too. Um, it talks about all the benefits of being an RDAP member. Um, we also manage the Summit Scholarships Program. So we were able to give 14 people a scholarship to attend the summit. Um, and those recipients will be turning in blog posts reflecting on their experience. Um, so congrats to those recipients and everyone just know next year we'll, we'll have the same thing. You'll be able to apply for scholarships. Um, we also uh, manage the Summit Buddies program. So um, it's, it's something that was on the registration form. If you are new to RDAP and maybe it's your first time going to the summit, you can sign up to be matched up with somebody who has been around for a while. Um, and so we'd love to hear feedback from those who participated on that too. And we ran the summit new member event, um, which uh, thanks to those who, who attended that. Um, it's not just a new member event. It's also for anyone who's new to RDAP um, so that you can network and get to know other people. Um, we do have Future plans um, past this, this year's summit. If anyone is interested in volunteering for the membership committee, we do have spots open. Um, if you're interested in working on any of the things that I just mentioned, uh, we're also going to be doing more to really clarify what the benefits of being an RDAP member are and looking to add additional benefits. Um, we're also going to be looking more at kind of assessing our current membership. We, right now, we have about 250 members of RDAP. About six of those are student members. 14 of those are the scholarship recipients that I mentioned, and three are financial hardship members. Um, we're going to be kind of looking more at who are our members, how can we um, have more diversity and, and reach you know, to places and people who maybe aren't involved, but could benefit from being involved. Um, and we'll be working on membership drive type of activities. Um, so thanks to the committee who was working with me this year. It's been great. I'm also looking for a co-chair. Uh, so really, if anybody who is interested wants to get involved with RDAP, the membership committee is a great way to do that. Thank you. Great. And I think the uh, DE, DEIA, and I believe Aaron is here. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. My name is Aaron Cadillo, and I'm co chair of the DEIA Action Committee along with Amy Schuler, who I think had to leave at this point. Um, so the Unite Accessibility Project has already been mentioned, and Amy's been the DEIA point person on that. And I'm very grateful for her because that seems like it's been a lot of work. Um, we're also something I'm very excited about planning a workshop series. Um, if you, you might remember a while back, we solicited some ideas from you all, um, for people you would like to hear from, you know, leading a workshop or doing some sort of presentation around DEIA and y'all had great recommendations. We looked into it, did a lot of research and, um, we've, you know, selected, um, somebody, but we are working with, executive board to finalize that. Um, we really took the feedback that folks gave the DEIA task force a couple of years ago very seriously. And we feel like um, a big area of, I guess, need um, is such a an offering as this. Um, and it's, it's gonna be amazing. It's unlike anything I've ever heard of. Um, so we would be really excited to offer that to all of you. And so hopefully there will be update on that soon. You already also heard about the town hall to talk about the future summit being hybrid. Um, that's a thing that we want to get uh, input from membership about since y'all will be the ones attending. Um, so I'm point person from DEI on that with uh, leadership. And um, I think that will be announced at some point in the future. Um, a new thing that we've instituted is a um, conflict resolution facilitator, a, a professional external facilitator. Um, this was mentioned at the beginning. So if you were at the opening um, announcements, you would have heard about this kind of working along with the code of conduct. Um, 
group. So there is more information on this if you have decided that it's something you want to use, more details about what it's for and how to contact us to request it. Um, right now on Whova, uh, the resources and um, I think resolution is the is the page within resources. But you can also contact me um, as well about that. Um, and lastly, uh, we also compiled a list of potential readings for the Journal Club. Um, although they, I think they've done a really great job actually getting into DEI topics with their readings, um, you know, but we just wanted to kind of like try to support all the committees in doing this work. Um, so I'm very grateful to the members of the committee, Josh Stradbari, uh, Mara Sedlins, Melissa Chomintra, and of course my co-chair, Amy Schuler. Um, they've all done such amazing, thoughtful, thorough work that I think um, will come to show a lot of value to membership. Thank you. I think is that our, okay. So that was our last action committee. I'm just gonna uh, reiterate, you know, that the uh, volunteer opportunity call has gone out. Um, please consider working with these groups. Um, RDAP is volunteer run and, you know, lives on volunteer efforts and energy and heart. So please consider giving of your time um, to uh, contribute, um, especially for sponsorship, membership, and um, publishing. These committees tend to have um, a hard time recruiting members, and so I really encourage you to consider those. Um, but every single action committee um, will give you a, an incredible experience and allow you to um, dig deeper into your RDAP membership. So um, it, you will get as much out of it as you put into it. So I really encourage that. And I have seen so many comments in the in the chat about the amazing summit that we've all just experienced. Um, real big shout out to Tess and Amy and the committee for organizing this virtual experience. I have to say that a lot of times I don't enjoy a virtual conference, but this one was really amazing. I love the timing of the social events. I didn't have Zoom fatigue. We started our days. I found it energizing to get me through the rest of the, the conference times. The talks were amazing. Um, so thank you to everybody that did a presentation. Um, just a really great experience. And we really want to maintain that. Um, and I'm gonna go to the next one. Oh, so I think I, oops, I have to give an applause. Hopefully, is this working? I don't know if it's shared, if I'm sharing my audio, oops. Oh. We can see your browser, but I'm not hearing your computer audio. Okay, Maybe. well, I will, I will do it. <laughs> Here we go. Let's let's get over the tech hub there. <laughs> okay, so the location of the next summit, as Rachel suggested already or said already, we decided that we are going to have a virtual summit again. Yes, um, I personally have attended in-person conferences. I do like them a lot, although I actually find that now traveling is a little bit stressful for me, but being at the conference can be really, really energizing. But we also realized that um, in October, when we should have started to make the decision, we still weren't sure about the virus. Um, we, we as the board are tasked with protecting the members of our, of our community. And so we make the decision that says what we're gonna do. Um, we have polled people before and found that we get every single answer. So we will get people that say they want a in-person, they want a, um, virtual and for different reasons, right? And so if we poll, you know, the membership who would be the people that could actually take that poll, we would get a lot of data, but we wouldn't really maybe be able to make a great answer to move forward. So that's why we decided to make the decision, the executive board decision to have it be virtual. This way we can engage our conference planner in October not in January to plan for the 2025 summit. We also really, really want to keep the benefits of the hybrid conference, right? We want to keep the accessibility. We want to keep people having that connection that we, I think we really felt that in this conference that we could make um, personal connections. I really enjoyed my, um, uh, my kickoff um, times with Mimi. Um, you know, she's my buddy this year, and I really enjoyed that. So um, I think that we are going to try to, you know, maintain that. And we really need 
people to commit to helping us make the conference be the best experience, whether you're attending in person or not. We also worry about the financial impact. Um, if we have a virtual and a high, if we have a hybrid and an in-person, it's gonna be more expensive. So um, we know that we have a really healthy budget right now, but we could actually really spend all of that just trying to set up one excellent hybrid um, conference. So we really encourage people to come to the town hall, share all of your, um, your thoughts, you know, the, the frustration with not having an in-person conference. But if you, if you are sharing that, think about the solutions too. How do we get to that experience that you really want? And so um, come to the town hall when uh, Rachel sends out the invite um, and, you know, send your, info, your, your um, feedback if you can't get to the town hall so that we're able to take all of that into making our next decision, right? Um, so, like I said, it's going to be virtual for 2024, but we're really hoping that 2025 is a really amazing hybrid conference. And we hope that we will engage our conference planner in October to begin to identify the location. Okay, so with that said, I think that was the only question that came up in the um, question board. Um, if you feel that I haven't addressed it, please um, contribute more into this. Um, and then um, I'm looking to see if there are some questions in the chat. I don't think there are. There are nice suggestions and lots of wonderful comments about the swag, about the conference, about the buddy program. Um, I just, I had a really great conference. I hope everyone else did too. So. So let me also hand it back to any of the board or leadership if you want to make any comments based on other things that you heard. Um, please feel free to do that. Maybe by raising the hand and I can call on people to um, talk. Let me stop sharing. Um, Okay, Ali, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I would just like to make one pitch, uh, one final pitch for people who presented in any format to really, really consider um, working up a, a manuscript for the Jesslib special issue because we love having um, you know more submissions. It is a double blind peer review process. Uh, so, you know, if you need um, publications for, for professional credit or anything like that, it's a great way to dip your toe into those waters, especially if you're unfamiliar or even if you've done it a hundred times. We really welcome um, all submissions. And if you're not ready to do a full article, you can also do a commentary, which is editor reviewed rather than double blind peer reviewed. And that's kind of a nice entry point. That's excellent. I, I second that. Um, and, uh, you know, a great way to get publications for your dossier if you have to do so. Um, okay. All right. All right. Well, if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to close this business meeting and wish everybody a great rest of your day. Um, take the experiences you learned here at RDAP Summit 2023 and do good work. Thank you all.